untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya Colored Tokens deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Jetmir and Nexus of Revels as our commander, a 4 mana 5 4 legendary cat demon, saying creatures we control get plus 1 plus 2 and have vigilance as long as we control 3 or more creatures, they get an additional plus 1 plus 2 and trample as long as we control 6 or more creatures, and finally they get an additional plus 1 plus 2 and double strike as long as we control 9 or more creatures. So Jendmir offers an incredibly powerful Anthem effect out of our command zone, and that's the main difference with our previous Minsk tokens deck that I featured a few months ago, is that Minsk required us to include some Anthem effects throughout the deck, but now that's no longer necessary with Jendmir as our commander, so instead we have more room for token makers and other awesome token synergies, and we've also got the new token cards from Streets of New Capenna. So starting out with our first category, which is removal, we've got some efficient removal spells with Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt. Then Cabaretti Charm is quite flexible, can deal with opposing creatures and planeswalkers, but can also make 1-1 tokens or potentially pump the team. We've got Incandescent Aria as potentially a one-sided sweeper, dealing 3 damage to each non-token creature. Then Conclave Tribunal is quite efficient thanks to Convoke, can tap some of our untapped creatures to help cast it. And the Wandering Emperor can exile tapped creatures and can also make 2-2 Samurai tokens. Then the next category is Mana Acceleration, where we have Allegiance Landing, which can potentially transform into a Danzo, a land that will generate extra mana and can also make 1-1 lifelinking vampire tokens. Then a Gala Greeters, Prosperous Innkeeper and Black Market Tycoon can all make treasure tokens to help us ramp. We've got Into the North as a more classic ramp spell, finding a snow land to put on the battlefield tapped. And then we also have a Song of Freilies, which can turn all our tokens into mana creatures by letting them tap for mana and eventually also powerful anthem on the final chapter. We've got Arcane Signet and Cold Steel Heart as ramp artifacts. Careful cultivation we can channel to make a 1 1 monk token that can tap for green. And same goes with Jugon Defense the Temple, which will eventually also transform into Remnant of the Rising Star as a powerful mana sink. We've got Cultivate as another classic ramp spell, and Mirari's Wake will double the mana that our lands produce, as well as giving our creatures plus one plus one. Then the next category are the one-shot creature token makers, where we have a Raise the Alarm, making a pair of tokens at instant speed, and then we've got a whole bunch of two-mana sorceries making two one-one tokens with Servo Exhibition, Dragon Fodder, Forbidden Friendship, Got Krenko's Command, Sapperling Migration, Verdant Command, and Join the Dance, which we can also flash back out of our graveyard. History of Benalia will make some Knight tokens, eventually pumping them as well. Outburst makes three Goblin tokens. Battle for Bretta Guard can eventually double all the tokens we have in play as long as they have different names. Release the Dogs makes four 1 1 Dogs. Battle Screech makes 1 1 Birds, can also be flashed back by tapping three untapped white creatures we control, so we can often flash it back on the same turn we cast it. Then Sram's Expertise makes three servo tokens and lets us cast an additional spell out of our hand for free as long as it has mana value three or less. Heroic Reinforcements makes two 1 1 tokens and will give our team plus 1 plus 1 and haste until end of turn. Angel of Invention can also pump our team and with Fabricate makes two 1 1 servo tokens. We've got Trostani also giving our team plus 1 plus 1, makes a pair of life linking soldiers. Harmonious Archon makes a pair of human tokens and says non Archon creatures have a base, power, and toughness 3 3, and they can still benefit from the bonuses from Jetmir. And then we've got Hornet Queen making 4 1 1 flying insects with Death Touch, and March of the Multitudes with Convoke can make a whole bunch of life linking soldiers. Then the next category are repeatable token makers, where Militia Captain can potentially transform in the Westvale Cult Leader, which will spawn an additional 1 1 token every turn. We've got Sky Knight Vanguard. Adlin and Legion Warboss making attacking tokens when they attack as well. We've got Blade Splicer making a 3-3 Golem token that can also gain First Strike. We've got a few Planeswalkers making multiple tokens like Elspeth making a pair of 1-1 Soldier tokens and Arlen making a pair of 2-2 Wolf tokens. A few enchantments can also make tokens repeatedly like Stancia Uprising. And then Outlaw's Merriment can make a wide selection of creature tokens randomly. We've got a Seekers Chariot, nerfed by Alchemy, but still quite powerful, can copy some of our creature tokens. 
We've got a Rebel Rousing from Streets of New Capenna, making 1-1 tokens for each attacking creature, and then Hideaway can potentially cast a spell for free. We've got Tendershoe Dryad, making 1-1 Sapperlings each turn, and then the Tovalar Suntmaster during night time can also keep making a pair of wolf tokens when it attacks. Then the next category is Card Draw, where we have Wedding Announcement, potentially drawing cards or making additional tokens, eventually giving our team a plus one plus one. Welcoming Vampire will draw cards as long as we play small creatures. Fable of the Mirror Breaker gives us a bit of card selection with the second chapter, also makes a 2-2 Goblin Shaman token, making more treasure tokens when it attacks. We've got Watley, which can be a powerful card draw engine if we manage to ultimate with the minus eight, which is quite achievable over the course of a few turns. And then Camaraderie will give our team plus one plus one, a gain X life and to draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures we control. And then last but not least, my favorite category in any token deck is the enchantments that double our token production, and we've got both Anointed Procession and Parallel Lives, and they also work nicely with treasure tokens. And then our mana base includes the new channel lands from Kamigawa, we've got some snow lands to go with into the north, and then a ton of mana fixing with all these dual lands, and even the three color lands like Jetmere's Garden and Kabaretti Courtyard from the new set. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Jadar, a ghoul caller of Nefalia, so some sort of sacrifice deck. Our hands is okay, not amazing, we're missing a 2-drop, no acceleration, outside of defense the temple at 3. Yeah, might still be good enough. So we'll fetch a forest and be on our way. Crossroads comes into play untapped, so it could be our second white source. Take two, put and makes a decayed zombie, and we draw our tycoon, which we can play here. So, could give us access to Elspeth next turn already. Might still be better off just playing something like Blade Splicer or Defensive Temple. Don't really want to play our commander until we already have a bit of a board. Shambler will make squirrels when it dies. Okay, so what are we thinking here? I can play Defense the Temple, and then this can tap for a treasure end of turn. We'll deal two damage to us in our upkeep, but then we'll have more mana for next turn. To potentially double spell, Trostani would be pretty decent, so I like that idea. Devotee will pump all zombies, and there's quite a few of those in play. So we're taking a beating, but we do have a Trostani coming up, which can stabilize us nicely. So I'll take all the damage. And then there's no mana for Devotee to make a zombie token, luckily. So we'll make a treasure. Take two. And add some plus one counters. Okay. So this on white. And then we'll untap it. Play Trostani, I think. Could also double three drop. Although the war boss token doesn't have a great attack right now. So let's go for Trostani and then could save the treasure, or I could sacrifice it since we are getting pretty low. And keep our monk token untapped. And pass the turn. Opportunist can draw extra cards with the decayed zombie dying. But at least we can block it for free. Could also block with our two life linkers just to gain four. Although then we'll lose one of the tokens. Yeah, we'll just block with the tycoon. Could have also blocked with Trostani, but token dies regardless. Frexen Tower 
lets them sacrifice Shambler for two mana, and it's gonna be Underdog and a pair of Squirrels from the Shambler. So your opponent is going quite wide. I think I still want to make a treasure, but it's going to cost us a bit of life here. No instant to play. Okay, Vanguard. Defends the Temple, transforms. So now we have quite a few options. Essentially have seven mana we can spend if we use our treasures. And uh, could go for Release the Dogs plus Blade Splicer, for instance. And then next turn, Jet Mirror can come down to pump the team, potentially even one hit KOing the opponent. Because if we play Jet Mirror now, it would be plus two, plus zero, Vigilance and Trample, which isn't bad. But a Double Strike will push us over the top. So let's try that. And then I'm not going to pump any tokens here. Okay, our defenses are set up now. And uh, if we get the chance to play Jetmir next turn, we should be in business. Zombie token attacks. Got our first striker to block it. And at 5 life I feel relatively safe. Otherwise we could always block with our life linkers. Opponent could have also used Phyrexian Tower to make extra mana. So we'll see. Hopefully we can dodge a sweeper. That would be painful. Soul Shatter deals with Trostani. Not bad. But they've already attacked. Opponent might be holding up mana for removal to kill Jetmir, but nope. Opponent spends the mana to make a zombie. And this is going to be a massacre. Could also Huatli plus and then next turn ultimate to make an emblem, but let's do this instead. And uh, I'll decline and attack with the team. And that's game. So yeah, showing the power of our commander. If we can play it on a board filled with tokens, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Zabaz, a red-white artifact, and our hand seems quite good. Multiple early accelerants with Tycoon and Greeters. So we'll get the Rootbound Crag in play, and then turn two, probably want to go for Tycoon. Although I don't really expect a ton of removal out of the Zabaz deck, so could maybe get away with the Greeters first. Currently don't have an untapped land for next turn. Yeah, I'll still try the Tycoon. And then, best case scenario, we draw an untapped land, and we can kind of go off. But our opponent does have one of their few removal spells with Portable Hole, exiling the Tycoon. Well, now the Galak Reaters might survive instead. Might have been an argument for playing Castle, that way if we draw Mountain, at least Retreat comes into play untapped. Whereas both come into play untapped with the planes. We've got an ogre with intensity. And uh, yeah, that could be quite scary. We'll take the one. Okay, so I guess battle for Breta Guard is an option, or we can forbidden friendship. That way we can uh, put a counter on the greeter so it doesn't die to the ogre. So treasure and plus one counter. And no attacks. Mull of the Skyclaves on the Ogre. Kills a token. So yeah, we're already down to 12. 
But now we can maybe do something powerful. And uh, Harmonious Archon wouldn't be bad here. Could go Strams Expertise plus Battle, which makes a lot of tokens to set up Jetmir. I think we want Archon, not that it really stops the Ogre as a 4 5. Hmm. So maybe we're still better off going Expertise plus Battle. And then we get to choose all three modes. And attack. I guess maybe it keeps the soldier back because we can eventually double it with battle. And then I'm okay trading a servo for the companion. Although the ogre is also going to start taking out our more unique tokens. There's a Ronin again. Opponent actually kills a Servo. Happy with that. I'll take the extra damage from Ronin. And it would not be a bad turn for Jetmir. Can uh, go for a plus one counter first. So we're close to controlling nine creatures with Jetmir, but I guess we can go for it next turn. And then for now, play Archon, which will pump most of our creatures too. And we'll gain some life. And make a treasure. So Greeters can attack. And how about a Servo token? Could get even more aggressive, but this seems okay, since I don't really want to trade off any creatures if I can help it. Put not trade for a servo, that's fine. Okay, Harmonious Archon can jump if needed. Because Ogre can also go face. If her opponent just plays a land, they could kill us with Ramonap runes, so I think I have to jump here. But Jadmir next turn can uh, pump our team quite nicely, so I think we'll be fine. Apprentice makes a Thopter, and Zabaz finally shows up. Okay, we get to copy quite a few tokens, including our treasure. I think that's all we can do. We'll uh, put a plus one counter on it, gain some life, make another treasure. And then we might have enough mana for Jetmir plus Watley, which can also pump one of our creatures. And then it doesn't matter too much which one we pump, but I guess the greeters can do the honors. Attack with the team, and this should be more than enough. Someone in the comments can do the math for me. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, it's what we've all been waiting for, the Jetmir mirror match. Lightning Bolt, not great at dealing with tokens. I do like Welcoming Vampire, but uh, this hand leaves a lot to be desired. So I think we can try better. And yeah, this should be better. Tycoon for early acceleration. And so let's see, play this on green and scry. Since we need red and green for Tycoon. Or I can wait on it and just play my command tower and pass, I suppose. So this on green. Play Tycoon. Opponent might have a raise the alarm here, or a removal spell. Wedding announcements, good. And then we could play a 4-drop, and Parallel Lives is probably pretty strong here. We'll also double our treasures next turn. 
So if they can't remove it, I think we're off to the more powerful start. Opponents got their own parallel lives, okay, that's fair. But we've got the mana advantage. So we can make two treasures. And then probably just go for history, keep up Verdant Command, as well as Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, I guess there's no harm in keeping up Swords. Pass it back. I'll be using my treasures before we take damage from them. There's Jet Mirror, which we can Swords. Can wait for them to attack first, maybe. Alright, opponents. Trigger Sweating Announcement. Making two tokens now as well. Exile Jet Mirror. Alright, opponents got the Protection Spell. That was unexpected. Okay, we'll make some tokens. Gain some life. And hope to top deck another token maker, I suppose. Raise the alarm, nice. Okay, so I can play Jetmir. And then we can raise the alarm at instant speed as well. But our team already has double strike. And uh, yeah, let's attack. So our opponent's gonna have to make some ugly blocks to stay alive. So being the first one to get to the double strike mode is gonna be the winner. And yeah, thanks to the man acceleration from Tycoon, we got there first. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Drana, Mono Black, and what do we think of our hands? Yeah, seems fine. A little bit of acceleration with Defense the Temple and maybe our treasure tokens. One double white. So we'll see what our opponent is up to, but probably a pretty aggressive black deck. Turn one knight is scary. I think we want to Fable first, while it still has a chance to maybe make treasure tokens, although a 2-3 flying first strike blocks our Shaman quite profitably. So maybe I should defend the Temple first, although if they kill my Monk, the second chapter goes to waste. Ooh, Incandescent Aria, that's a big deal. So that will wipe the opponent's board next turn. So yeah, let's get the Goblin Shaman going. And hopefully they just tap out for Drana here. Perfect. So they won't be able to grow Knight this turn. Also doesn't attack past my Shaman anyway. And this is gonna be a blowout. Do I want to discard anything? I'm pretty happy with my hand, honestly. So we'll decline. And uh, yeah, let's fetch up Mountain, maybe. And I'm not gonna mess around. Play Arya. One-sided Sweeper. Shaman attacks. Get some extra mana going. And yeah, our opponent concedes, understandably. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Gitrog monster, Black Green Lands. Our hand's okay, not the best. Could use some acceleration. But at least we have a little bit of card advantage with Welcoming Vampire, maybe even Hotly. I think we're okay making a token or two here with Dragon Fodder. Just to get something on the board, and then we'll still have Exhibition to draw with Welcoming Vampire.
path of discovery to explore. And we can play our vampire. And attack. Don't think I want to play Huatli just yet. Better if we already have a few extra tokens in play. So could go with Tapland plus Exhibition draw with Vampire. And then maybe set up our Rabble Rousing. Massacre for three. Gonna wipe the board instead. That's a setback. But at least we got it out of the way, since it was going to be quite good against our deck regardless. So Huatli doesn't do much on Empty Board, so I guess it's Exhibition... Keep up swords for Gidrog Monster. And this can name green. So there's the monster. And as soon as we get the chance in response to the path trigger, we can swords it before they get the chance to play another land. Okay. So Rebel Rousing looks pretty good on this board. And find probably a Cabaretti Charm. Attack, make some more 1 1s. And then now Huatli is looking pretty decent. Hopefully, we got all the sweepers out of the way. Opponent could still replay Gitrog Monster thanks to Castle Garenbrig making an extra mana, but it's gonna be a Nissa instead. So you can animate a land, turn it into a 5-5, or get back cards from Graveyard. Fatal push on top. Opponent keeps it. And Huntmaster, not a bad draw either. So, what's our plan? I guess if I play Jetmir and attack, we would control enough creatures to give the team plus three plus so, double strike, and then we can go after Nyssa, plus deal a ton of damage. Or we could go with Watley after attacking maybe to build up loyalty. Kind of like Jetmir here. And then do we go all at Nyssa. Three at Nyssa might be enough. I guess two at Nissa might be enough already, since it would go up to four power double strike. I'll send three just to make sure. And yeah, that's nine creatures exactly. And our opponent concedes already, so yeah, Jetmir does not mess around in this deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's not amazing, as we don't have any 3-drops. And the mana sequencing is also kind of awkward, since if this fetches a mountain, we can't join the dance on 2. So I think we can do better. And this is pretty clunky as well. Only 2 lands, no acceleration, lots of 4-drops. I think we'll try again. Okay, this I'll try and keep. And then... Might be correct to bottom tender shoot riot, as we can use these for an early convoke on March. Which doesn't quite work with tender shoot riot. So sequencing turn two join the dance, turn three cabaretti charm. Maybe turn four already play Jetmir, or we can set up a convoke, we'll see. I think this hand is better than any of our previous attempts. And then we're facing Another new commander here, Rigo. So you can expect lots of cheap evasive creatures to draw cards. But for now, let's join the dance. Might see a raise the alarm end of turn, we don't. Wedding announcements, fair enough. Gala greeters could also be quite nice. For now, I think... I think we pass with the idea of Cabaretti Charm making tokens. And I'm not really interested in trading when we have Jetmir. Put in place Rigo. 
and gets to draw. I'll take it. And we'll make some tokens. Okay, so could already march, which would make five tokens. If I Gallic Reaters first, that's minus one token, four tokens, and then next turn Jetmir. That might actually be good enough. So Gallic Reaters pass, set up march. And then next turn Jetmir and smash. Once Wedding Announcements transforms, they will no longer be able to draw cards with Rigo. So a little bit of a nombo there. And I guess we can block and then march. Pick up some counters as well. So X equals 4. Opponent has a Swords in response, that's fine, means there's no Swords for Jetmir. And we'll still have the 9 creatures necessary. Masked Vandal doesn't do anything. Okay, yeah, Jetmir Smash seems like a solid plan. And then next turn Camaraderie, in case this isn't enough. So we trade for a shield counter here, basically, and yeah, opponent just concedes the power of Jetmir, even after a double mulligan, onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Calyx, so enchantments versus tokens, and we've got a very exciting hand. Arcane Signets for ramp, can maybe set up turn 3 procession before we play Fable to make two Goblin Shamans. Although we have a lot of options here. Because if we play Fable first and then Procession, we can maybe double the treasure tokens we generate. Sithis on two is very scary, however. And our deck doesn't play much removal. Could see the argument of Fable first, because if we play Procession and they just remove it, we didn't really get any advantage out of it. Opponent with a shrine drawing a card. Can put a plus one counter on it. Conclave Tribunal could answer Sithis, although Calyx can just get rid of the Tribunal. So I think just going Fable here is fine. And then hopefully next turn we can do some powerful things with Procession. It's going to be a Cathar's Call on the Shrine, so that will make 1-1 one, one tokens every turn. That's okay. So Puna not playing Calyx just yet. Ooh, Incandescent Aria. That's exciting. What do we want to discard? Man, my hand is stacked now. Maybe Elspeth, although it's our only token maker besides our uh, treasures here, so maybe I don't discard anything, is that potentially correct? Yeah, let's decline. And then sequencing. I could... Incandescent Aria, attack. That's not gonna work out too well. I guess I could procession, attack, opponent's probably blocks, so we lose our Shaman, but we get two treasures and then Arya clears the board, and we have a procession in play. Yeah, maybe that's still reasonable, and there's a small chance our opponents doesn't block, because they would maybe lose their valuable shrine. One can hope. And yeah, our opponent took it, and uh, this is gonna be brutal. They still get to keep their 1-1 one -one token, but two important threats dealt with, and our opponent concedes. 
yeah, we were gonna get to go off with our Shaman making treasure. Next turn maybe Elspeth can uh, make four tokens, which casts our Conclave Tribunal for free. Maybe even play Mirari's Wake beforehand, thanks to our treasures, so we can empty our hand. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Raph. So having Lightning Bolt to answer it is nice, but this hand's not keepable with only the one land. This is better. Is it great? If we draw a cheap enabler for greeters, it might be. If we can make some treasure. So... For now, we're still kind of missing a 3-drop. As we draw another 4-drop. Opponent cycles a desert. So, sadly, no turn 3 play. But we've got a lot of powerful 4s and 5s. So this is a turn where they could play a Wrath. So could get a Parallel Lives in play first, although it wouldn't trigger Gala Greeters. So how about a Sika's Chariot, which is a significant threat and also gives us a treasure. And then maybe sets up our Parallel Lives where we can make two Cat Tokens instead of one. Can't attack into a Wrath, so we'll just pass it back. And then Chariot copying treasure tokens could also be a valid play, especially with parallel lives to double them. So now Raph lets them play historic spells at instant speed. So it's very difficult to play around. But I guess the Seeker's Chariot is legendary in case of like a 5 mana sweeper here, Runa's Blast. So we could start with parallel lives, see if that resolves. Copy treasure tokens and uh, take it from there. Could also play Mirari's Wake using my treasure. Let's try this. I would love to resolve this, which we do. Chariot gets to attack. And we'll go for. Treasure token here. Bonus go to Conqueror's Death. Exiling my parallel lives at instant speed. It's unfortunate. Can still hordling outbursts if we'd like, or we can keep the extra mana for Mirari's Wake. Although it's also going to be taxed by Conqueror's Death, so I'm probably better off just playing a creature next turn. So we'll outburst. And then we get to make a treasure, put a plus sun counter on it, and gain some life. So didn't get to copy anything with parallel lives, but uh, at least we got our chariot going. This attack might imply a sweeper incoming. Yep. Okay. So we can play a Trostani here. Two crew chariots. Disdainful stroke. And our opponents put their commander in the graveyard so they can reanimate it with Conqueror's Death, of course. So, yeah, this is rough. They had all the answers. Okay, so how about a Mirari's Wake? Followed by Dragon Fodder, two Crew Chariots. Opponent does have a Karn's Bastion, which can grow Wrath, but it would be a trade at least. So that happens. And then we'll see if we want to battle Screech next turn or if we want to hold it back in case of another sweeper. And for now just play Jetmere. 
we do have a lot of mana now with Mirari's Wake. And Castle Ardenvale is also quite useful to make more tokens. I like what they did with the Thriving Cycle now. A nice green-white dual lands, as opposed to just being a gold card. And there's the Fairy Time Raffler. Bouncing a token, killing it. Okay. So, don't necessarily want to overextend, but also want to keep up the pressure. So how much mana do we have here? 12. I mean, I could cast everything, basically. But that seems a little risky. So instead... I could play Arlen, make some wolves. And then still activate Castle Ardenvale. And uh, take it from there. And then only play Jetmir if we feel confident that we can kill the opponents. We'll send both at Teferi to make sure. Really should have seen that coming. Narset's resolves. Still four mana for a sweeper. Available. Finds ooh Rivers Rebuke. Wandering Emperor can maybe exile a token. Rebuke means we kind of want to kill the opponents as soon as possible. Not sure if we can get there with Jetmir here. So we have... see... 10 in play. Yeah, I think we can get there with the Jetmir. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty committed now because of River's Rebuke, so... Might as well. So, Screech... Jetmir. Can expertise. And we can flashback Screech, tapping Jetmir and the two summoning sick birds. And I'll go face. And that should be more than enough. Alright, so we got there in first strike damage. Regular damage still coming up. Awesome. Always satisfying beating a control deck. So yeah, this Naya tokens deck, definitely very impressive. And what impressed the most, no doubt, is our commander. So a significant upgrade over Minsk in my previous Naya tokens deck. So you could just swap it out with Jetmir. But I think kind of moving away from author anthem effects, including more token makers, and of course some of the new additions from uh, Streets of New Capenna are worthy upgrades, I think. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.